Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the nursing process, a very interesting topic, a very important topic throughout your nursing. Okay, so wherever you go, okay, so not only during your study period, so when you start working, when you continue working till your nursing is existing you have to write your nursing process okay so very very important topic even for your exam okay so we will discuss this nursing process in steps okay so we have five major areas of nursing process so first is assessment diagnosis planning implementation and evaluation okay so what is assessment assessment is you are assessing the patient you are ruling out something from the patient okay you are trying to find out what is the problem what is the abnormality what is the complaint everything you are going to rule out during the assessment area okay so with the assessment as soon as you are doing a lot of steps, you do an assessment, you find out something from the patient. Okay. So, with that point, what is the next step? The next step is diagnosing. So, diagnosing is like you are diagnosed or you are going to find out what is the problem with the patient. Okay. So, you are going to tell this is the problem. So, that is your diagnosis. The diagnosis, your medical diagnosis is different from your nursing diagnosis. The medical diagnosis, the medical team does. Then the nursing diagnosis, the nursing team or the nurse as such who is taking care of the patient will be doing the diagnosis part. Okay. Then comes the planning. Okay. So, now assessment is over. The diagnosis part is over and then comes the planning. Planning is what I have to do for my patient, what I have to do to improve the condition of the patient. So, that will be coming under the planning area. So, you will have a list of things to be done or the list of things you will be planning to be done for the patient so that the patient recovers from the problem okay so that is your planning and then comes the implementation so you would have listed around 10 problems or like 10 plannings but how much is it possible to implement on that particular client okay so you would have planned so many things but everything is not applicable for all the patient so, out of the 10 plans, you can be able to implement only 5 plans. Okay. So, that is called as implementation. So, whenever you do an implementation, you must have a rational for doing so. Why do you do this for this patient? So, you must be able to rationalize. As I said, nursing is something you do for the patient with a rational. Without a rational, you will not do anything on the patient okay so you have to have a rational when you are implementing something on the patient and then comes the final step of evaluation that is like you have to evaluate whether the planning or the implementation what we have done for the patient is successful whether it is effective whether the patient is responding what is the next step i have to take to improve the condition of the patient so all these things will be done in the evaluation so now you have an overall idea what is nursing process so nursing process comprises of five parts where you have your assessment diagnosis planning implementation evaluation okay so you will be using all these five steps when you are formulating a nursing process okay so today's class is about the first part of assessment so what we do in assessment so when you are going to assess a patient what all you have to assess how do you assess and after assessing what you have to do okay so that only we are going to discuss in today's class so first is like assessment has four major areas okay so the first area is the collecting data then the organizing the data then validating the data and the documentation of the data okay so first collecting the data 
okay so how do you collect data okay uh, just imagine a patient is coming to your area a patient comes maybe you are in an op or otherwise the patient is admitted you are just entering the room you see a patient getting admitted so what is the first step is like you are going to assess the data okay so your data is of two types one is the subjective data and other is the objective data what is subjective data subjective data is what the patient is saying objective data is what we are seeing it is with evidence objective data is are always with evidence what i am seeing from my eyes i am going to document okay so that is the objective data so you are able to identify or differentiate the subjective and objective data subjective data is what the patient is saying and objective data is what we are seeing from the patient so subjective data has to be documented as the same sentence what the patient is saying okay so how you will write so you can write the patient says i am having severe abdominal pain okay so you have to write i am having severe abdominal pain okay so that is your subjective data objective data so evidence what are you going to assess okay so what am i going to assess patient is just saying it is pain abdominal pain okay so now i am going to assess the type of pain the site of pain the duration of pain the severity of pain everything i am going to assess so first what i will do i will ask where is your pain so whether you know your abdomen is divided into nine quadrants okay so you have to ask the upper quadrant the middle quadrant the lower quadrant so the which area the pain is exactly located the area of pain okay the duration of pain okay so how long it is it paining from yesterday from today from the past 10 minutes okay so the patient will document okay then comes how is the pain so pain you know how will be the pain you have you know different varieties of pain okay so it is like a sharp pain pricking pain mild pain um it is irritating pain all those type of comments they will give you okay so you have to ask for the type of pain okay and the intensity so the severity of pain mild moderate severe extreme the patient cannot control pain okay so all these things you have to assess so that is your objective data what i am going to collect from the patient okay so your data is two types objective and objective data you have collected okay then comes the source of data source of data is how do you collect the data from which area from which person okay so the first source is the client okay the client's data is always 100% valid because the client will tell the exact data than the family members okay uh, if you ask a mother um, how is the pain of the child the mother will tell severe pain from yesterday morning it is very severe the child is crying and all those things and what you have to do ask with the child how is the pain okay and the child will tell from yesterday i am having pain only that means the child will tell okay so it is always the mothers who are giving an exaggerated data okay so you are, you must always remember the data has to be collected from the primary source that is from the patient first if the patient is not able to answer in which condition psychiatric patients uh, pediatric cases geriatric cases patient who are not able to verbalize all these patients you must take a secondary source so you have to depend on the family members the relatives friends who is staying back with the client then you have to collect the data from the others otherwise it is always the client or the primary source and then we have records records is they will be having lots of evidences okay that is like they would have done an x ray a blood test or usg or mri something will be there with the patient okay so record gives us some data so that also you have to collect and then health care professionals so health care professionals are the people who are working with us in the team 
who are these healthcare professionals? The occupational therapists, the physiotherapists, and the X-ray technicians, the medical team, all these professionals who are working with us. So they are also giving us data. So these data are also we are going to take. And then the literature. Okay, so patient is saying pain, sharp pain. Okay, so you will be documenting as sharp pain. But when does this sharp pain comes? that you will get information from the literatures, your books, your knowledge. Okay, so that evidence you are getting from your literatures. Okay, so, so source of data, you have five sources of data. First is the primary source that is the client, then the family source, friends, neighbors, whatever it is who is accompanying the patient. Then third comes the records, the documents and then comes our uh, neighbors or our healthcare professionals who are going to support us and then finally we have our literature. So from these areas we are going to retrieve data. Okay? So that is with the data sources and then comes the methods of collecting data. So you have two measures of uh, sources of collecting data. One is the observational method, the other was the interviewing method. So what is this observational method? So observe. If the patient is having pain, what the patient will do? Whether he will smile? No, he will cry. So seeing that you can make an observation, the patient is having pain. So you will have a pain scold, uh, scale, a pain scale will be there and you have to document what is the pain score of the patient seeing the patient's face. So, you are going to observe and you are going to see what is the pain level of the patient you are going to check. That is your observational method and then comes the interview method. Interview method is asking. Okay, You can ask whether the pain is mild, moderate or severe. So, they will document. So, methods of data collection we have observational method and the interviewing method. We have two areas of data collection. So next coming is the organization of the data. So you have collected the data, your subjective data, objective data from which source, from uh, the which methods, so everything you have collected, a particular set of data you have collected. Then you are going to organize the data. So organizing the data, you can do it as a model or a framework. So you have lots of models, nursing models we have. So you can, uh, if the data you are going to uh, formulate as a model, so you have your different uh, uh, areas that is like you have different theories. So according to theories, if you want to formulate or if you want to make it as a framework, you can do. So however, you are going to organize these data. And then coming to validating the data. So validating is like you are going to find out whether whatever the data you have collected, it is true or false. Okay, so you cannot trust only with the oral data. So you must have evidence as I said. So you must always see the cues. Cues are the signs or symbols. If the patient is saying that I am having breathing difficulty, what is the cue? The patient will have gasping. Like that type of breathing will be present, which gives an evidence that the patient is having breathing difficulty. Okay, so that is a cue. And then inferences. Okay, so inference, you check the SpO2 level, you have your finger probe, check the SpO2 level, if it is only 80%, definitely the patient is having breathing difficulty. Okay, So this is the way you will be validating the data whether it is true or false. Okay, So your data collection is over, the organization of data is over, the validation of data is over and then coming to the documentation of data. So now you have to document which is applicable, which is true, which is confirmed, all these data you have to document. So you have to tell whether the patient is like telling the true statement or not. So now you will document. So assessment column, what you have to write, subjective data, objective data. So when you are writing the subjective data, you have to write the factual manner or the own statement of the patient. So the own statement, as I said in the beginning, your subjective data are supposed to be documented in the same way how the patient has presented. Sister, I am having 
severe abdominal pain you have to write it in the same way i am having severe the patient says that i am having severe abdominal pain that is the subjective data okay the own statement the factual statement you have to write and then the objective data then you have to write your findings okay so the patient saturation is 82 the patient is having a respiratory rate of 1 uh, maybe it is 45 or 54 okay the pa patient is having uh, breathing difficulty and uh, like intercostal uh, breathing is present diaphragmatic breathing is present then chest tightness is present the patient is coughing all these things are your findings so those findings also you will write so i think like assessment you are thorough with your assessment part okay so where you have collected the data you collected the data in the sense you have seen your subjective and objective data the sources of data the methods of data collection then you have gone to the organization of your data or the framework okay and then coming to the validation of data we have seen and then finally the documentation of the data which is 100 percent valid that only you will enter in your nursing process okay so with this we complete the assessment in the nursing process in next class we will deal about the diagnosing area of the nursing process okay in case if you have any doubts kindly give your comments in the comment box until then bye take care